Picture the scene. You're on a gig or you're in a recording studio and suddenly the singer shouts, drum solo. You panic. Sweat drips from your face. Your mind goes blank. You think, what do I play? How do I play? Hang on, what are these things in my hands? And so you play nothing. If you've ever experienced this, or if it sounds like your idea of hell, well, I'm gonna try and help you today. In this video, we're gonna talk about why you need to practice improvisation and some tips to help you get started. Let's do it. It can be easy to think that improvising is reserved for just jazz musicians and drum set virtuosos who can play drum solos for days on end. The reality is that most of the music that you listen to and that you play is first created through improvising. We just call it jamming. Think of all the hours spent in sweaty rehearsal rooms jamming with your friends. That was improvising. And it's because of that that the first reason that we should incorporate improvisation into our practice is because it's the closest you will get to a real world situation of writing and recording and playing with other people. When I'm in the studio working with artists and songwriters, sometimes my first idea isn't right. Sometimes my second, third and fourth idea, well, they miss the mark too. But I keep on creating, keep on improvising ideas until they are happy. I can only keep doing that because I've practiced improvisation on my own with the things that I'm working on in my practice room. So let's try this. Let's take a basic groove, let's say eighth notes on the hi-hat, two and four snare drum. And I want you to try to improvise the bass drum pattern. Try to challenge yourself to play new ideas, push yourself in new directions and see how far you can go with this. I often hear from drummers who complain that that lick that they were working on or that chop, well, it fell flat on the gig. It was a disaster. It didn't work. It's happened enough times to me to know that it happens to you as well. The reason is that you don't really know that thing that you're trying to play well enough. Improvisational practice shows you what you've got nailed and what you really don't. And for that reason, that is why you need to practice improvisation. It's our final exam, our final check before we take it onto the gig and try this out in the wild. So here's something that I like to do with like licks and patterns that I'm working on to see if I've really got them down. Let's take right, left, right, left, left kick. I love it, it's a great lick and I've done loads of videos on it. Let's put it into a one bar, one bar form. So we've got one bar groove, one bar fill. In that fill, I'm gonna push myself with orchestration and dynamics. I'm gonna see what shapes and ideas can come out with if I just give myself those rules and try it. It might fall apart and that's okay but this is me checking exactly if I know every single thing about that lick before I try it with other people. Now the dictionary defines improvisation as something that is created spontaneously or without preparation. But practice, well that is something that you do that is deliberate, something that requires thought and attention. So how do you practice improvisation? I've actually asked this to every single teacher I've got, every single teacher I've had, and I've always found that the answers weren't quite as deep as I wanted. If you've watched this channel before and you know me a little bit, you know I love systems, I love tools that allow me to get faster, and allow you to get faster, quicker. So I created a system that works for me and I just released a 10 lesson course all about that system and my ideas on how to practice improvisation. There's a link in the description below if you want to check it out and go a little bit deeper with your practiced improvisation. There's something very freeing about just sitting down at the kit and improvising. It's the closest you get to your true drumming self and your real voice on this instrument. And when you crash and burn, which you will, it doesn't really matter. Because what's happened there is you've just been shown something that you want to play, but you can't play yet. So the final point in today's video is that improvisation shows you 
what you want to play that you then should go and deep dive and explore further. For one last exercise today, let's head to the drum kit and choose a subdivision that you're uncomfortable with. For me, that's gonna be 16th note triplets. I suck at them, but I'm trying to get better. Set a timer for 30 seconds and grab your phone or your camera and set it up to record you. Play in that subdivision for 30 seconds and try to push yourself to play whatever is in your head. When you make a mistake or something doesn't come out right, keep going, don't stop, but try to remember that idea. Now when you're done, go watch that footage back. Take your pen and paper and write down every single idea, every single little flub that came out. You can transcribe it if you want, or you can just write a little note in shorthand that makes sense to you. Now, hopefully you've got a list of 10, 20, 30 different things that you could go and practice. And what you've done is you've taken that final little bit of improvisation, that stage three element, and now it will inform the rest of your practice. And you'll actually end up practicing things that you really, really want to play instead of what someone has told you to play. Don't be scared of improvising. It's just making music. But to make the music that's in your head, you need to incorporate improvisation into your daily practice. I hope you like this video. I can't wait to see all the amazing music that you guys make by improvising. But until next time, happy drumming, and I'll see you soon.